Hello and good morning, everyone. Welcome to Margate. Please pay attention to our following announcements. Bible class will be Bible class today will be at 5 p.m. Today we have a special AY program presented by the Health Department on stroke. Please be out here at 6 p.m. sharp. Vespers today will be at 7:15 p.m. Sunset today will be at 7:33 p.m. Today's nurse on duty is Sister Brown. Please remember our weekly Wednesday night prayer meetings to start at 7.30. We would like you to be here in church if possible. If not, you can join us on Zoom. Choir rehearsal today at 4 p.m. Couples meeting today will be at... The couples meeting will be at March 30th. Please remember our Spring Revival in 2024, a season of refreshing that begins April 13th through the 27th. Our host will be our very own Pastor Kevin McCoy, and the speaker will be Pastor Kevin Bryan. We have a concert that will be coming up, presented by Franz Serrant. It is called God's, World, God's Word in the Limelight, Saturday, April 6th at 7 sharp plantation youth ministry presents a youth jam 24 calling all performers saturday july 13th if you're interested please see the contact information on screen potential signs for warning signs for diabetes is Increased frequent urination, UTIs or yeast infections, extreme exhaustion, unintentional weight loss, intense hunger or thirst, tingling or numbness in extremities, or slow healing wounds. If you are experiencing any of these, please see your primary care physician. Our quote today is from Rick Warren. It says, the more you pray, the less you panic. The more you worship, the less you worry. Have a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Please stand with us as we begin our divine hour. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. And we say together, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Church is now called to worship. And we're singing Yes, the World. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? King of glory. King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be. 
just want to be with you. Everybody sing, keep up flowing. Sabbath church. The song says, every man will bow down and say that you are king. Welcome. Is this a beautiful Sabbath day? It is dark outside. It's raining outside. And it's still a beautiful Sabbath day. You see, we worship God, not because of what he does, but because of who he is. So you might have gone through a tough week. It might have rained every day. You might have lost your job. But you come here today to praise God because of who he is. Who is he? He is our creator. He is our sustainer. And he is our savior. So if you're, you're happy to be in the, Lord of the house of the Lord today, let me hear you say amen. I can hear a louder amen than that. Let me hear you say amen. amen. God is good. Thank you. I like your amen. 
You know, he, God has been so good to us. He brought us here safely. We're missing some people. Some people didn't make it out today. They looked outside and they saw how dark and dreary it was. My wife said to me this morning, I, I know some people are not coming to church today. But we know that we serve a good God. And, 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 and the uh, psalmist says that everything that has breath should praise God. So if you're in the sanctuary and those who are at home, we need to still praise God. Uh, he is a good God. So I want to welcome everybody here who are our regular members. Good to see you. I want to ask, do we have any visitors here with us today? I know I saw some faces that I did not recognize. Uh, you, do you mind standing and tell us? We have some over here. So we'll get to you're, tell us who you are, where you're from. Welcome. She is from Jamaica. Welcome. Glad to have you. We had visitors on this side. Go ahead on the stand and tell us name and where you're from. Ocala. And it's, it's, it's a good drive, but you can come down and visit us any Sabbath that you want to. There's another visitor. From Jamaica. Welcome. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. At this time, we're going to sing our welcome song. Well, let me make sure I didn't miss any visitors in the middle. Oh, we have two. Go ahead. Coral Springs. Okay. Glad to have you. You're welcome to come and worship with us anytime you feel free. We're going to sing our welcome song, and we just go walk around and greet each other. We are, we are Margate. We welcome you today. We are Margate. We welcome you today. We are Margate. We welcome you today. We are Margate. Have a blessed day. We are Margate. We welcome you today. We are Margate. We welcome you today. We are Margate. We welcome you today. We are Margate. Have a blessed Day. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to celebrate those who had a birthday in the past week. Our birthday celebrants. Is there anyone here who celebrated their birthday in the past week? Happy birthday. I see some hands on this side. We have a young man right here who wants to say happy birthday. We have some on our praise teams also celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday. Okay, there it is on the screen I was waiting for. We have Natalie Man Monroe, who was on the 17th. We have, oh, Nathaniel. On the 17th, we have uh, Josiah, our AY leader. He was on the 17th. We also have Cameron Jones on the 17th. We have several. We also have Sister Fenton. Uh, Valerie Fenton was on the 18th. We have Paula uh, Tugman was on the 20th. And Nicolene Greensward on the Greensword. You know what? They're not putting these words up correctly so I could see them. But happy birthday. Thank you. Any other celebrants that we miss? So at this time, we're going to sing our happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear celebrants. Happy birthday to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord Happy birthday 
this time we normally would go right into our children's story. But we are going to take just a couple of minutes today to talk about what the young people did last week. Last week we had our Global Youth Day. And um, for those who don't know, that's the day when the youth actually are, uh, actually are in service for the Lord. So they're not just sitting down in church. We have them outside actually doing something. And, and we started off in the morning where we had our young people in three separate groups, and we went out and we visited the shut-ins. Um, we, did, we visited Sister Sonia, Sister Pummel, and Brother and Sister Hudson. And so we had them go to the different homes. They gave them a little gift basket, and they had worship with them. They prayed, had talk about something, read scripture, and then they prayed with them. Uh, so what I wanted to do is share with you just some of the things that we did. So we have three young people, one from each group, that are going to come forward. Um, Annabelle, Abigail, Josiah. And I'm going to ask Annabelle the first question. Um, what did you learn from going out and visiting the shut-in last week? Um, I mean, it was, to me, it was awesome because then there's people at home who wish they can come. They're just sitting there staring at their TV. I mean, that doesn't really do as much as it should being here at church. So um, it was awesome. Amen. And we have our, her sister, uh, Abigail. How was your experience? And who did you go and share faith with? Um, we visited the Hudson's home. It was very nice going there because we sung hymns with them and they were singing too. And it really looked like they were happy to see us and that we were wanted in their home. And the atmosphere was just so loving and pure. And after we gave them a gift and left, like, I felt good because I, like, I did something. You know. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then we have our AY leader. And I, I'm going to ask him a different question because, you know, he was our speaker on Wednesday night. So he, he can explain himself. Um, tell us why do you think it's important that the young people are a part of this mission that Jesus left for us? I think it's important that the young people involve themselves because if there's nobody crying in the church, your church is dying. So when you see young people go out into the world, you can rest assured that the church is still alive. So I think that it is important for us particularly to go out and worship with people so that we can show those who cannot come in that we're still keeping the faith alive. Man, he didn't have to take the mic. He could just, all right, thank you. I want to thank them, Josiah, Annabelle, and Abigail. And we had other young people. They, just, they went out to those three different uh, individuals and had their share of faith. But that was the only thing they did because we started our youth week of prayer on Wednesday night. And if you ever get a chance, you can go back and look at it on YouTube. But uh, Brother Kolak, Josiah, who was just standing there, he was the speaker. and he gave, It was a really good a sermon Wednesday night. And then we also followed that up on Friday night where we had Cameron. He also gave us a powerful sermon. I'm, I don't think he's here. I don't see him. But he also gave us a powerful sermon. So it was an entire week. But on last Sabbath, there's one last thing I wanted to share. Um, the young people from multiple churches, Ambassador, Plantation, Lauder Hill, and Margate, we went to Sawgrass Mills, the mall. And, and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with a flash mob. But they did something called a flash mob where a large group of young people would show up to an area unannounced and just started singing. And, and it, it was amazing. I mean, some of us were nervous at the beginning. Uh, El Lapeert was worried that we might get arrested. 
and they, they, you know, when we talked to Pastor Stewart, he said that we, you know, we normally say Margate is fantastic. We might have to change it because of Ella Pier to jail for Jesus. <laughs> so when we showed up and we looked around, there were no security guard initially, and they just started singing. And people started looking, hearing the commotion, hearing the singing. People were taking out their cameras and they're recording everything that we're, we were doing. And at the end, Pastor uh, Murphy, the associate pastor ambassador, he was there. He was leading out. And he said they, were, they had individual asking him, when are we going to come back? Or were we going to sing a second song? There was just one song and then we left. So it was amazing to have the young people and see the impact that it actually had on the people that were there. And I think Stephanie is going to show us just a small clip of uh, what we did while we were there. Amen. And it's really good when we get the young people active. We keep them active as they grow older, and so we can get to keep them right here in the church as they continue to do what the Lord tells us to do, which is to go out and tell others about him. At this time, we're going to go right into our children's story, but first they're going to come up, and they're going to go around and collect for the building fund.
scared. Fifth was a beautiful girl with long black hair and mouths. She didn't know Jesus, and she didn't care. At school, she became friends with a girl who spoke often about Jesus. The girl was a Seventh-day Adventist. Jesus created all things, including you, the girl said. He lives in heaven. Fifth didn't really understand what her friend was saying. She honored an image of stone at a temple. And she wasn't interested in hearing about Jesus. Then Fifth fell ill. It was a strange sickness. Everything was fine during the day, but when the sun went down and the sky grew dark, she began to hurt herself. She hid herself with her hands all night. She didn't stop until the sun rose in the morning. Then she acted like normal. Father and mother were worried. Fip wasn't sleeping at night, and she had cuts and bruises all over her body. They took her to a witch doctor, but he couldn't do anything. They took her to a fortune teller, but she couldn't help. Fip visited many witch doctors and fortune tellers, but no one could heal her. Father and mother spent a lot of money selling a car and other valuables, but Fip grew worse. When the sun went down and the sky grew dark, she hid herself all night. When the sun rose in the morning, she returned to normal. Father and mother decided that their only hope was the stone image at the temple. They shaved off Fip's hair and left her at the temple. Fip was bald and scared. She worked hard to memorize the teachings of the stone image, hoping that it would save her. But nothing changed. One day, Fip remembered her friend who had told her about Jesus. She sent a text message to her friend about her sad situation. The friend wrote a prayer and sent it back. Fip had never prayed to Jesus. But when she read the texted prayer, she gathered all her courage and prayed for the first time in her life. It was evening. The sun was going down, and the sky was growing dark. Help me, Jesus, Fip pleaded. Please come into my life and save me. That night, when the sun went down and the sky grew dark, Fip didn't hit herself. She slept for the first time in months. When the sun rose in the morning, she woke up feeling like a new person. She never again had trouble from evil spirits. Father and mother were amazed at Fip's healing and they asked what had happened. She told them about Jesus. Father and mother called an Adventist pastor and asked him to teach Fip more about Jesus. Fip was happy. Now she wanted to know more about Jesus. Not long ago, Fip gave her heart to Jesus and was baptized. She knows Jesus has made her beautiful inside and out. Jesus has given her a new heart and she wants to live with him forever. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help open a school in Laos where more children can learn about the Jesus who created all things, including children. Thank you for planning a generous 13th Sabbath offering. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. All right, who was listening to the story? What was the little girl's name? All of you were talking. What was the little girl's name? Ava? All this set right here is in trouble. I think fit. Very good. Is anybody sure? What was her name? Fit? Okay, good. Somebody was listening. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. Um, what was wrong with Fit? At night, she keeps hitting herself. Why did she do that? Uh, she's mad. <laughs> because she had an evil spirit in her. Very good. And she never knew about God. Amen. Very good. Anybody else? Okay, so you were paying attention. Very good. Um, so when her mom and I, I want you to, I want to tell you something. When the mom and dad took her to the temple, they thought that their only hope was in who? The stone image. Is that where our hope is? 
Where's our faith? Very good. When we were little kids, well, when I was a little child, we used to sing a song called, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less Than Jesus' Blood and Righteousness. I don't know if we sing it anymore, but... Okay, some of you might know it. You can ask your parents about it. But I want you to remember that even when... Listen, when you, when you have a problem, what are you supposed to do? Pray to God. Pray to God. Pray to God. Listen, this is very important. Sometimes when you have problems, you think it's too complicated or God's not interested or it's too little of a problem. But all our problems, God cares about them, okay? It really is that simple. If someone is poking you and you want them to stop and they won't stop and you tell them to stop, you can pray about it. If you fell down and you hurt yourself, pray about it. Every single little problem that you have, you are to pray about it. Pray about it. Very good. Because your hope is? Where's your hope? In who? In God. In God. All right. Who's going to pray today? All right, we're going to go very quickly, very short, okay? So everybody can get a turn. Close your eyes, please. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for food. Thank you for all this offering. Half of you must get. Um, give all the offering to every people and get this world to God and give the money to everyone um, who wants them. He's the same, amen. Thank you, baby. Okay. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this wonderful day. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for waking everybody up. Thank you for... Thank you for this church so we can worship you. Thank you for my mom. Thank you for my dad. Thank you for my cousins. And thank you for my cat. Amen. Amen. Clasp your hands and close your eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for today. Make us pray every day. And make us be responsible for everything what we do. And go to church and make this church bigger for other people who come and don't, who don't know about Jesus. And name and pray. Amen. Amen. Give food to the poor, help to us be um be kind. Thank you for the stuff. I love pear. Amen. Love your eyes and clasp your hands. Dear God, thank you for today, and also I want us to have a wonderful Sabbath day, and also I want no accidents if we're leaving and there happens, and one happens. I'll always worship you and pray for you, and also I, I will always go to church, and I wish I could go every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, thank you for the food, thank for the shelter, thank for everything have you done for us. Thank for the, the, the wonderful church and this whole community and the cities. Thank for everything you have done for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And amen. Thank you, parents, for bringing your lovely children. Um, if anyone is interested in doing the children's story on Sabbath, please let me know, or Sister Walker or Sister Kerry or any other ladies from the children's department. We welcome the help. Thank you. All right, kids, go back to...
Please stand with us as we have our opening hymn. Number 528, A Shelter in the Time of Storm. shelter in the time of storm. Seek your whatever ill be tied. A shelter in the time of storm. Mighty rock in a weary land. Cooling chain on the burning sand. People taken from Luke 7, verse 36 to 41. And we're going to read alternately. When you find it, please say amen. And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did weep wiped them with the hair of her head, and kisses, kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Last. No, one more. Oh, you were listening, so we are together. <laughs> and Jesus answered, said unto him, Simon, I have someone to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. Last, there was.
This is the word of the Lord. Father, who is always there to hear our prayer and to still the storm that is raging. Heavenly Father, we thank you to be in your house once more. Thank you, Lord. You are a great Father. You are a loving God. You are a forgiving God. We thank you, dear Lord, for just hearing our pride. Thank you for waking us this morning, dear Lord. Thank you that we can breathe, dear Lord. Oh God, thank you we can see. Oh Lord, we can move and we can, we have our mind where we can think, dear Lord, to give you honor, to give you the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, it's been a rough week, dear Lord. But you have brought us once more into your house. Once more, your Sabbath day, dear Lord, where we can gather, dear Lord, your people together and to just to praise you and to put everything now at your feet. Let us empty ourselves, dear Lord. Empty yourself and beseech you now. We beseech you anywhere your people is now, dear Father those online, anywhere 
they are now dear lord we send up our prayers to you and we pray that you will remove dear father anything that will stop our prayer from being answered heavenly father we just want to ask you to forgive us of our sins dear lord cleanse us of all unrighteousness dear father sometimes dear lord we know that we slip up dear lord but we know that we have a great a loving father that is willing and, and to listen to our cry. And as we beseech you, dear Father, we ask you, dear Father, forgive for forgiveness. And that it is our, our, our will, dear Father. And it's our desire to, to have a more closer walk with you each and every day. Remove, dear Lord, that anything that's in our life today that, 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 that will stop us from to serve you, dear Lord, the way that you deserve to be served. Fill your people, dear Lord, with, with love, dear Father. Bind us, dear Father, with unity dear, now, dear Father. Bind us, dear Father, with your grace, dear Father. May we feel your, the warmth of your loving hands around us, dear Father. Remember those, dear Lord, who may feel at this time that they, they don't feel love. Remember, dear Lord, those who are sick anywhere they are could be right here in our presence those at home in the hospital anywhere they are dear lord we pray that you are the great physician you know every string that make up our body you know every cell now dear father in the name of jesus i pray dear lord that you will rebuke sickness dear father wherever it's coming from dear lord it could be spiritual i pray dear lord that the might of God will intervene and heal your people now, dear Father. Remember every family that is represented here. Remember our children. We pray. We ask you, dear Lord, that the devil may take his hands off our children, dear Lord. Whatever habits they may have, where they may develop now, dear Lord. I pray, dear Lord, that you may put within their hearts now their fire. Dear Lord, the, the sole desire, dear Lord, just to serve you, to serve you and to worship you, dear Lord. And as they grow each and every day, dear Lord, I pray that the, the devil will not triumph over you, dear Father, over your children, dear Father. We see the problem now, dear Father. It's as if, dear Father, the devil is winning, dear Lord. But as we look this morning and see these children, dear Father, we know, dear Father, that they will hold up your name, dear Jesus. Beat your people now. Be remember those that is in incarcerated, dear Lord. Oh, Lord, you know some of them. They're innocent, dear Father. They've been led astray, dear Lord. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you may... Let them set them free, dear Lord. And as they may, and as they see your good work, dear Father, that they will not turn back. They will serve you, dear Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, help your people now, I pray. And dear Lord, you have sent us, dear Father, your man's servant, to deliver us a message today. I pray, dear Lord, that thou will be with him, their father, and strengthen him, their father, with thy mighty right hand. And that the way, their father, that we came to church today is not, be, not the way that we leave. We may leave the sanctuary or anywhere we are in line, rejoicing, their father. Pray that our life, their father, will be in tune to your will. And that the day, their father, when you shall return, will not be amongst those who will be hiding and finding a rock their lord but we will be amongst those who said here comes our king this i pray in your name amen amen
Happy Sabbath, everyone. I pray that as I minister to you in song, that your hearts will be blessed in Jesus' name. They say this mountain can't be moved. They say this change will never break. But they don't know you like we do. There is power in your name. We've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tides will never change. They haven't seen what you can do. There is power in your name, so much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable, God we believe, God we believe for it, from the impossible we'll see a miracle god we believe god we believe for it we know that hope is never lost oh for there is still an empty grave God, we believe no matter what, there is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move the immovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe for it. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. Move the immovable, break the God, we believe, God, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe for it. You say. I believe you said it is done. You said it. I believe you 
to be in the house of the Lord. He has spared our life so we can be in the sanctuary and we are in the land of the living. Will the, oh, the deacons come forward, please? <laughs> I'm going to read a little piece, just four, three verses. Psalms 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that run down upon the beard, even on Heron's beard, that went down to the skirt of his garments. As the dew of Her Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Just wanna praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. Blessings and done for us. Help us, Lord, not to be, take all that you have done for us for granted, but let us be grateful for all that you have done for us from the day we were born until now. Here we come in a sanctuary. We ask that you bless the offering and that it, it may do good that others may come to know you before eternal is too late. Continue to be with us, and as we worship you today, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Happy Sabbath again, everyone. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning. 
incarnate new mercies I've seen. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not as thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning's new mercies I see. All I am needed, thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature manifold weakness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning's new mercies I've seen. All I am needed, thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to chair and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings on mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning's by morning's new mercies I've seen. All I am needed, thy hands hath provided. Great is 
thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness great is thy Praise the Lord. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Let the people praise the Lord, for he's worthy to be praised. I'd like to recognize the clergy, Pastor Garfield Blake, worship with us. Pastor, just give us a wave. Amen. Uh, many of you don't know, but back in the days, Pastor Blake was one of the leading evangelists in Jamaica. I've seen over 300 people got baptized in one evangelistic series. Uh, but today, the Lord has another preacher for us. Amen. Uh, you may know him as a singer. Afterwards, he's an Edwards. And, and, and if your name is Edwards in these parts and you can't sing, you have every right to go get a DNA test. But he's also an entrepreneur. A man who deals in necktie and bow tie, and not tires. He's also an awesome master of ceremonies. If you should see him, belly, laughter, excellent. But he's also anointed preacher, international evangelist. We have seen him led many to Christ. But did you know that he's also a chaplain and that he works in the federal system speaking to men who are incarcerated? And today, our safety day, uh, this month we're talking about stewardship and one of the role of stewardship is to take care of the assets, amen? Take care of each other. I believe he's uniquely qualified to speak to us on this, our safety Sabbath. A man who is anointed preacher and one who uh, rubs shoulders with the sheriffs as well as those who were found guilty and are behind bars. Amen. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to whisper a prayer for the preacher as he comes to give us God's word today. Evangelist Claude Beulaland Edwards. Before he comes, however, before he comes, today is a lot of singing. Amen. Uh, we learned this week we should sing a new song. Well, we're going to have the praise team. After the praise team, I am sure Evangelist is also going to sing. Now, this afternoon he has to rush back to Orlando, so he won't be singing for AY. But I'm just putting him on notice that he owe us an AY. All right, so we'll be coming back to sing for us another time. But now we're going to hear from the priest team and then Evangelist Claude Edwards. And also our speaker will be joining us as well as we sing... Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. world where we roam ancient 
words will guide us both. Ancient words, ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words together now ancient words ever true changing me changing me changing, changing you. you we have come we have come with open hearts oh let, oh, let the ancient words impart. one more time ancient words ancient words ever true Changing you. changing you, for we have come, we have come with open hearts, oh let the ancient words impart, ancient words ever true, everybody in this place believe changing it today, me it's changing, you. changing you, and that's why we've come, we have come with open hearts, Oh let. oh, let the ancient words impart. We have come with open arms. With open hearts. Oh, oh let. let the ancient words impart. Uh, before you leave the stage, I want to take the time this afternoon to recognize the presence of God in this place. I want to recognize the Father in this place and more so the presence of the Holy Spirit. I want you to know today that today is a very extraordinary day. A day that is filled with life and hope is a safe day. And, and just before I pray, I, I want to pray very specially today for a, a lady I received a message earlier this morning when I was a little boy growing up in Jamaica the East Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventists had a president uh, President Emmy Ware his wife a nurse awesome lady I've met many years ago and this morning I heard she is not well are we together and uh, Sister Marilyn Smythe and her husband, Brother Smythe. I don't know if you know them. Do you know them? Oh, you know them? Oh, yeah. Uh, they are my very good friends. And today I, I told them I, I really want to pray a very special prayer for Sister Ware. Could you just bow your heads with me? Is there anybody else in this house not feeling so well today? So we could just download some of the blessings on you. Is, is there somebody else? Somebody else? somebody else and if somebody is watching me by way of the internet and you feel the presence of god in your room in your sofa wherever you are in the kitchen today just lift up your hearts because god is present in this place father in the name of jesus we thank you today we declare today that you're god over our lives and i want to pray in a very special way today for sister beatrice Ware. i pray god that you would bless her and bless her husband bless the family Help them to know today that you are a way maker. You are the one who does more than we can ever think or imagine. I pray for everybody else online who are watching who are sick. Help them to know today that you are the great healer. And whatever you touch is well touched and whatever you touch is never the same again. I pray for those here today who are 
feeling a little despondent. Help them today to know that they are in the presence of God. And in your presence, there is fullness of joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Words of joy. Just sing that chorus on me one more time. Words of life, words of hope. Ancient words ever true. Just sing that chorus on me one more time. Ancient words ever true. Changing me and changing you. And changing you. Oh, we have come. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Ancient words ever true. Changing me. Changing me and changing you. Oh, we have come. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Come on, somebody say amen. I don't know about you, but I am in the place where God abides. I thought I would get a better amen than that. You see, one of the challenges we have in our lives today is not believing God. You see, a lot of us believe the devil. We believe the devil will attack us. John 10, 10 says, Jesus puts it this way. The thief come to do what? But a lot of people don't remember that. All they spend their time on is the thief. All they look at is the thief. The thief is, is going to rob them. They're going to lose their job. And uh, that's all they, 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 they care about. The thief, the thief, the thief. But let me, I work with the, in the name of Jesus. Oh yeah, but I, I, I remember having spoken to them in the jail and I said to them, I said, Jesus says that you will come. <laughs> and I see the guys looking at me. I said, the, the, the thief will come. And, and the Bible only, only wants us to understand the dynamics when, when he says the thief comes to rob, kill and destroy. Some people are rejoicing over the fact that they are still alive, not realizing they have been robbed. Robbed of your joy and robbed of your expectation and robbed of everything that you ever think that you could ever have. But the truth about it is, I don't care what the devil steals as long as he doesn't take my joy. Can somebody say amen? Oh yeah, I, I stopped by here today to tell somebody that Jesus comes and he says, I come so you may have what? life and have it more aware abundantly in other words jesus was talking to live people how could jesus offer life to live people oh and i want to break it down for you he's offering a better life can somebody say amen in other words, he's offering you a life that is filled with joy and and uh, unspeakable and full of glory can somebody say amen oh yeah i am so glad to be here um, today, I, I thank God for uh, my elder when he, he shout me up and he says, um, we need a speaker. I said, okay. <laughs> he said, I need a speaker. Once he sent me that, I know what he's saying. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. So I said, okay, all right, all right, hear this, hear this. Let me, let me clear my, um, my, my diary because I have a program that same evening, but God would have it that we have a few hours in between. Mm -hmm, yeah, and um, since it's my program and I am preaching here, I have to control the time. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say amen? Oh yeah, so can we just bow our heads now and pretend the sermon is done? <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And, and so today, I want to thank Elder Peart in a very special way for his invitation and his introduction. I want to thank those of you watching by way of the internet. Today is a remarkable day. Today is a day we talk about safety. 
safety. Today, I, I tell you the truth. Every time you think about safety, you, I remember as a child growing up, my mother used to give us some safety tips. In other words, the first safety my mother introduced me to was a safety pin right at the side of my nappy. In the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, we said, God is so good. Man, I'm telling you, you know what safety is? Safety is a precaution. So we have a, I, I, I remember used to walk around with this, with this safety pin. And if you ever make the mistake and pull it, in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you. And so here, so here's the deal. We are accustomed to safety can somebody say safety yeah yeah we're accustomed to safety and while i grew up i realized my mom gave us some little indications one thing she always said read the bible every day can somebody say amen because if you don't read the bible you are putting yourself at risk of not knowing what's best for you can somebody say amen and i stop by here today to tell somebody that the only way you can be saved if you follow instruction my mother told us one time, she said, do not take anybody else's medication in the name of Jesus. Hey, and I'm telling you, we used to see some bottles um, back in the days, Elder Peart, um, we, we, where, where my mother and father have medication and the medication bottles were so, were so secured. No, they're not tight. Yeah, you can turn them, but they're not open <laughs> because of the security feature that they put on it. Are you with me? I'm telling you. So here, here the deal. God knows exactly where to put the security in our system. I remember the days gone by uh, when we used to have um, uh, drills at school, you know, um, fire drills. Now we're not having fire drills like that anymore. Now we're having active shooters. Yeah, we have been active shooters. I, I, I saw a little situation in Orlando recently where a driver, a bus driver, uh, was supposed to drop off a little girl. And, and, and thank God for Apple. I don't believe in it, but you know, that's the only thing I, I hear, the tag, the, the little tags. The, um, the mother bought a, a tag and she placed it inside the little girl's bag. Safety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody said Safety. Yeah, so it was in the little girl's bag and the driver dropped off every other child except her. And the little girl alone was in the bus. And the mother's watching the trail, watching, watching it, watching it. Someone said, keep your eyes on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's watching it, watching it, watching it. She's watching it, watching it. It passed her house and it's gone. And she wondered where, and she called the cops and said, man, um, my daughter passed. Pass her, Stop. And I have an ear tag and I'm watching it. And the bus took her to a mall. And, and, and you can see the bus is at the back of the mall. And so when the cops got there. It was just in time for the driver to invade the little girl's privacy. Are, are you with me? Let me tell you something. Let me tell, let me tell you something. There is safety and there is safety. Are you with me? So if you love your children, put in security measures to make them safe. Now, if you have a bank account that says you have to watch your bank account, don't give personal information to people. Be careful uh, using the internet. You put personal information there. Otherwise, you give up your own safety. Can, some, can somebody say amen? Yeah, yeah. And so this morning, I heard this policeman, uh, I presume he's a police. Uh, yeah, I heard him talking and he was giving you some tips. Follow them because you're going to make sure that the security drills and the, all the things that you're going to use to make yourself safe you follow them. Amen. You do what? Yes, man. You have to follow them. Follow them. Follow the rules and the regulations. If man could make rules to make us safe and want us to follow them, God also make rules. Can somebody say amen? amen. Oh, yeah. Everything they make, they make a manual. Not a woman manual. A manual. Yeah, they make a manual in the name of Jesus. I don't know why they call it manual. Because they know that after a while, man will believe that he knows everything. And start set up the TV without looking at the instruction. And by the time he turn it on, pure smoke in the back. In the Never follow instruction. You better follow, somebody say follow instruction. 
yeah, yeah. And, and, so, and so here it is. Here it is. We want us to understand today that God gives us indications. He gives us highlights. He gives us pointers that if you follow them, your life is better. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do good to those who despitefully use you. And you don't see no reality in it. You don't see no truth in it. But the truth is, if you don't follow that, heaven will never be your home. God said, don't eat pork. People look at you and tell you, man, <laughs> you, <laughs> now tell you, man, <laughs> you don't know how pork nice. <laughs> well, kiss heaven goodbye. So God said, the poor might not kill you. And people have this, this thing that they have that they say, man, what you don't seek can kill you. What you don't seek can hurt you. Lie. Someone says lie. lie. Someone says lie. lie. Hey, hey, hey. People say what you can't see. Can, can you see the flu? No. Anybody see COVID? No. Hey, hey. Let me tell you the truth. Whatever you can't see may already be killing you. Follow instruction. One thing I've learned in my life is that the course and the quality of your life is not only dependent on how you see God, but how you see yourself. Hence the Bible puts it this way. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Why do you think the Bible says that? Simply because a man will behave in a way that is consistent to how he sees himself. So it go. Well, that was the introduction before the news. Can I, can I just sing my little song right now? Oh, okay. So, get ready. The news is coming. This is ABC News. Shelter in the arms of Jesus. If you can't find it, I'll do it at the end. Oh, all right. Can you, can you bring up the monitor screen? A man of sorrow. God's rejected stone Despised by the builder Left to stand alone Still you kept on loving All our sins you've called your own You've laid the foundation and become more cornerstone. Lord, you're marvelous in our eyes. While we were yet sinners, you came and died. Lord, you are marvelous in our eyes. I'm more excellent Savior than words can describe. No longer rejected. Now you glorify. For Lord, you are marvelous. You're so marvelous. You know. Master Builder, you taught us all your skills. You left us with instruction on how you'd have us be. May we be worthy craftsmen, fulfilling all your plans. 
with you as our foundation you're the rock on which we stand Lord you're marvelous in our eyes while we were yet sinners you came and died Lord you are marvelous in our eyes our more excellent Savior than words can describe no longer rejected now you glorify for Lord you are marvelous you are so marvelous wonderful mighty God the everlasting King Lord you are marvelous in our eyes while we were yet sinners you came and died Lord you are marvelous in our eyes I'm more excellent Savior than words can describe no longer rejected now you glorify for Lord you are marvelous you are so marvelous Lord you are marvelous you are so marvelous Lord you are marvelous you are so marvelous in no right Lord you are marvelous so marvelous in our eyes amen St. Luke chapter 7 verse 36 and I want to nutshell it for you today because it is of great importance that you came here and you leave better than you came somebody say I'm leaving better and so here what the Bible says the Bible says because this is one of the most prolific scriptures written and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. This was after something specific happening in this Pharisee's life. I want to set a backdrop for this if you haven't known it and never knew it before. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner. I wonder why the Bible believes it is important or the writer decide, St. Luke, decide it was important to interject that this woman was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at the meat of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment. In other words, the church people didn't know where Jesus was, but a sinner knew. Because <laughs> anywhere God is, he introduces himself because he says, I came that sinners may repent. Can somebody say amen? Oh yeah, I came to offer you life. And so wherever God is, guess what? Sinners are always going to find themselves there. And this woman brought an alabaster box. And I want you to watch this dynamic. And stood at his feet behind him weeping. Oh, behind him. It's a second woman I realize in scripture that creep upon Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hey, you remember the first one? Who was she? Oh yeah, yeah, she creeped upon Jesus. She had an issue and went to doctor. I can imagine Walgreen fill a lot of the, of the, of the, of the prescription and, and CV. <laughs> and doctors keep eating her money. And the doctors didn't have no hope, no help, no, no healing. But she creep upon Jesus. And here comes another. This one creep upon him with an alabaster box. The first one crept upon him with an issue. 
The first one crept upon him with an issue. But this one now creep upon Jesus with a moral problem. Hold, hold a second. And, and so hear the deal. And, 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 and I remember it was the disciples, the same church people. Church people had a problem with that. Can somebody say amen? All right, all right. So, so let, me, let me knock it up for you quickly before I say amen. She stood at his feet and she was weeping. And she remember, weeping may endure for her. But joy come in there. All right, hold on. I soon tell you when the morning come. Yeah, yeah. And, and she began to wash his feet with her tears and did wipe them with her hair. And, uh, 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 and she kissed his feet. Let me tell you something. And remember, the Bible said she was a sinner. In other words, she was no ordinary sinner. She was a prostitute. You can imagine if you ever pass somewhere and see Elder appeared. You see a woman who you know as a prostitute. I use her nice tall here. And uh, you can imagine Florida Conference here. We'll be starting to, to look for a new elder. Hey, but hold, hold a second, hold a second. And, and, so, and, and so here. Now when the Pharisees which had bitten him saw it. Church people. Hey, I'm, I'm scared of Pharisees, you know. Because there was a Pharisee one time who caught another woman in the name of Jesus. Hey, you see up here, woman we're talking about today, today's safety day. And guess what happened? Safety only comes when you know God. Uh, are you with me? Uh, you could have put up burglar bar, you could have carried firearm, you could have carried everything for your safety. If God is not with you, you are... Are you listening to me? Hey, hey, and so here today is safety day. We're talking about safety, safety, safety pin, safety, uh, yeah, safety, yeah, yeah. So, so here the deal. Now, so the Pharisees, they heard, they saw this, yeah, and they spake within themselves saying, this man, Simon, let me just give his name before. Simon was the one who invited Jesus for dinner. Prior to Simon inviting Jesus for dinner, you know what happened? He had leprosy and God healed him. So guess what? He was just having a little dinner as an appreciation. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hey, hey. And so he had an appreciation dinner and invited Jesus. And Jesus came. Just say, yeah, we have food. He <laughs> said, boy, we have some, some veggie, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, and so this lady now, she came uninvited. Nobody invited her, but she just stepped in. She just appeared. And hear what the Pharisees say. Because I wonder to myself, when I look at the church today, whether we are modern day Pharisees or we are Christians. You see, the truth about it is, the safest place to be should be the church. Amen. The safest place for your, your own personality, for your own dignity, your own pride. You know, the church should be the safest place. And guess what happened? You should be able to say anything to a church member and know that they're not going to tear you down. They will always lift you up in prayer. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And so, and so here, and so here, the Pharisee, these well learned, these polished men, they speak to themselves and say, "If this man, but he knew you before, and he still saved you, he still healed you. He, you didn't think he know about you, but with somebody else, he don't know nobody. Anyway, this man was so dangerous to the gospel." And says, if this man were a prophet, bright and out of order. If Jesus was a real prophet, what are you inviting me to yard for? Anyway, if he was a prophet, would he have known what manner of woman this is that was touching him? Lord, let me tell you something. Jesus cannot be contaminated. Can somebody say amen? 
anybody can touch him and whatever touches him has to change can somebody say amen Hey, 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 I want to tell you something. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah. So, so, so hear this, so hear this, hear this short changing man. Yeah, yeah. He's saying that she was a sinner. But, you know, I wonder, I did some studies on this while I was studying chaplaincy. And, and I realized, held up here, that this man, Simon, the reason why he believed he knew the lady more than Jesus is because... <laughs> all right I, I will tell you when i come back <laughs> oh yeah 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 see him simon see him Simon. yeah yeah see him simon and simon have a son the same son named jew uh, the same him have a son the son the son had a problem with the alabaster oil so like father Like father, like son. Let me tell you, that's why it is important for us to have good parenting structure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Traits of parents become tendencies of the children. Yeah. All right. So, so after that was all said and done. Now, he is wondering. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat something to say unto thee. And he says, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pences and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, <laughs> with him hypocrites, I suppose that he to whom for he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. The reason why she was crying is not because she's bright. The reason why she cried is not because she was eggs up. I haven't heard that word in America. I haven't heard. It's only Jamaica alone I hear that. When my mother having conversation with the big people and you're coming to church, she says, your eggs. In the name of Jesus. That's why I stop eating egg. Anyway, so, 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 guess, so guess what happened? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, no, no, he's in a situation where he starts confusing him, himself. Yeah, and, and so Jesus looked at him and Jesus was now putting him in his place. Jesus said, you invite me here, you don't give me this, you don't give me that. You don't wipe my feet, you don't kiss me, you don't do nothing at all. You don't do anything like that. But this woman... To whom much is given, much is required. That's why I tell you sometimes when you come to church and people start praising God and people say, and I say shut up. No, no. Because you have nothing to thank God for. Don't worry about people. There are sometimes some people have so much in their lives that they want to thank God for. Man, when people talk, just raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so, so all that is being said, and now he's in a predicament. And, and all of a sudden, my friends, he now realizes, what? Something is about to happen. The truth about it is the devil always comes in. You see, the devil, when he cannot get your confidence, he will take your competence. When the devil cannot take your confidence, he will take your competence. Because the truth about it is, this woman had enough confidence in God. And God would have it so much so that she came and she anointed him just six days before the Passover. Six days before Jesus went to Calvary. Six days. The disciples, no church people, no Pharisee, never did it. And guess what? History would reveal that this sinner, this woman who they consider to be a prostitute, it went down in history as the last person 
The last woman who anointed Jesus for his burial. Oh, hold a second, hold a second. And, and this happened in a place called Bethany. You, you remember? Yeah, you, you remember anything about Bethany? Bethany was where who lived? Lazarus. No, but I, the Bible didn't tell me anything about Lazarus. Parents, his father, mother, grandmother, or anybody. Then the Bible says he lived in a house and there were three people who lived in the house. Who were they? Lazarus who? Mary and who? But at this particular family gathering, at this little party, the Bible puts it this way, that Lazarus was right there and Lazarus was sitting around the table. Read it. Lazarus was sitting around the table and the Bible said that Martha was serving the food. Where's Mary? She was at Jesus' feet. She had a lot to thank God for. She had so much to thank God for. The best place she believed that was safer for her is in the arms of Jesus. The best place that she could have ever been is in the presence of God. Because in the presence of God, there is what? fullness of joy and guess what I want to tell you something if the same Pharisees had ever found themselves in the presence of God they would have been better off and so she's there and all of a sudden it became a problem because there is something about when you can tell yourself you are exceptional Anybody here feel exceptional? Yeah. Raise your hand and say, I'm exceptional. No, no, no. Don't talk like you, you don't believe it. Raise your hand and say, I'm exceptional. Yeah. Clap your hands if you feel exceptional. You don't know what God did for you to be alive today. So many people have died, but you're still alive. Somebody raise your hand and say, I'm exceptional. Oh yeah, you are exceptional. Because I want to tell you something. Women don't have babies at 90. But with Sarah, God made an exception. Can somebody say amen? Hey, hey, let me tell you something. Little boys don't go into fire and come out unscathed. But with the three Hebrew boys, God made an exception. Oh, yeah. From pit to a palace to a prison to power. Are you with me? Oh, my friends, not many people have that on their resume. But with Joseph, God made an exception. Can somebody say amen? amen? Man, I've been to Animal Kingdom and I see lions. But I've never seen anybody go inside there and sit before 10 lions hungry like I don't know what. But let me tell you something. One man did it. And guess what? He came out even when he was standing in front of danger. The presence of God made a difference. Can somebody say amen? And let me tell you something. You might not be able to exercise that kind of wisdom or that kind of faith. But with Daniel, God made an exception. Can somebody say amen? Oh yeah. He came down from heaven. Born before his birth. Those he came to save wanted him dead. The gospel of Jesus is Jesus fixing things he didn't break. One man broke it on one tree. Jesus fixed it on another. One man messed it up in one garden. And Jesus fixed it in another the devil looked at them and says, man, I got you where I want you. Oh, yeah? They spat on him. They tried him. They beat him up. And then they hung him to a cross and stretched him out to die. And all of a sudden, my friend, they took him down and buried him. He didn't even have his own tomb. They buried him. It's a long time God don't have a lot of things for himself. When he was being born, no place 
was available for him. Everywhere he gone to, they said there's no vacancy. And I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not surprised that people today would live their lives with no vacancy for God. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, no vacancy. Absolutely no vacancy. I remember there was a young guy in the jail. I spoke to him one time and I said to him, I said, man, are you coming to the devotion today? He said, no, man, I don't believe in that, man. So I, don't, I don't believe that, man. So I said, well, you don't believe? So I don't believe God is God. So I said, what? Are you kidding me? You don't believe God is God? It's okay. I said, hey, come here. What are your charges? He told me. I said, God is going to put you in a place where he alone can reach you. I said, God is going to put you in a place where only he alone can reach you. And you're going to stay there longer than you plan to stay until your faith gets you out. And let me tell you something. It never took long. He went to court. He was a young boy, just 15 years old. And guess what? When your crime is of a certain standard, they try youth like adults. And let me tell you, they sent the message over to my office for me to give a reference on him. Is <laughs> the fastest re in the name of Jesus. Is the fastest reference I've ever written. Man, I'm, I'm, man, I'm telling you, man, I am, I am talking and I'm typing. Boom, 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 boom. Mm. No, God. <laughs> this man don't believe in God. He seemed to have no remorse for his crime. <laughs> bam, bam. And I've signed that. I used to put signature number for my name. In two days, they called me and I said, Man, hey, chap, can we get an explanation for something? I said, Just as I would read, I saw it go. When he got to the judge and stood up in front of the judge, the judge asked him one question. Do you believe God? And he looked and he said, the same thing the chaplain asked me. The judge said to him, we have all the facts. We have all the evidence. We have every reason to send you all the way without any possibility of sunshine. But I'm leaving you in the hands of God. <laughs> inside this court in three months for sentencing man when I went to I went to class the next day I'm the first one in the class <laughs> the first man in the class can I tell you that right now that three months don't come yet but even yesterday he was my leading assistant chaplain Before I left classes yesterday, he looked at me and said, God, good E, man. We <laughs> said, Who? <laughs> Who good? You mean Hala? He said, No, God. So I said, oh, Where you get your change from? What happened? So, boy, I am in my cell in the nights and God is talking to me. He said, No, not God. God don't, God don't talk to people who don't believe in him. He said, no. He said, Lord, talking to me. Some said, praise the Lord. 
I rest my hand on his shoulder and I prayed for him. And while I was walking out, the examination officer stopped me at the door and she says, um, you have a young man in your program. The court is going to eat him alive. So I said, no, the court not going to eat him. I believe that the court is going to be like that fish that swallowed Jonah. The court is going to be a means of transportation. And she looked at me and she says, you know what? I want to thank God for you. Just as you have transformed so many of these men's lives. I thank God for you. I'm telling you, I left there with teary eyes to my car. Because over my 16 years, I have came in contact with thousands of men. And let me tell you something. You are only secured in the hands of God. I don't care what you have. I don't care how much money you have. You could have more money than what Chase Bank can provide. You could be rich as manure. I don't care. I don't care what you have. Unless you have God, you don't have anything. Until you know the love of God that reaches down to common man. You have nothing. God is not concerned about your career. He is concerned about your character. And so, as I wrap this up for you, the same woman that the Pharisees didn't like, they had a problem. One man said, you know what? That money, that oil. You know what we could have done with it? You see that money for that oil? And watch church people. The same person that was telling her that the money for the oil was too expensive to wear some Jesus. Hear what happened. It never take long for him to sell Jesus for less than that. He sold God for less than the ointment money. And all of a sudden, Jesus went to the worst experience, but he left with something on his mind. And he brought it home to Simon and he says, you see, this woman, her sins have been forgiven. It is such a great thing when you hear that from God. When God can look at you and tell you your sins are forgiven. Her sins have been many, but her sins are forgiven. Don't worry about people when they talk because God, as I recognize in Melissa's song earlier, God has the last say. C can I tell you? I don't care what the doctor says to you. God has the last say. I don't care what the judge said to you. God has the? I don't care what the banker said to you. God has the what? I'm telling you, don't worry about what people say. Because guess what? The, the, the people who talk, they can only talk from their own experience. Until they know the love of God. Until they know the power of the living God. Can somebody say amen? And so, and so here this now. So Jesus is now getting ready to go. The disciples are so filled with themselves that they don't even know that Jesus is going to be crucified. And now he faces the cross. Shelter in the arms of God. They took him, tried him. Innocent man found guilty. Whipped him. Stabbed him up, hung him dry on the cross, left him to die. And now, even this death is our security. Are, are we together? 
And so he's about to die. Two thieves were hanging beside him. One thief said, hey, are you near Jesus? So, so tell me something. Oh, uh, yeah, that's why I'm going to believe in them Bible thing. I am not. Okay, tell me something. Oh, come, you are God and you are die beside us. Hey, three people on the cross are about to die. Three. One is going to die in his sins. One is going to die for our sins. And one is going to die from his sins. Can, can somebody say amen? Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Jesus just look at him like in dismay and say, man, you just missed your last opportunity. You just missed your last opportunity. Hey, there could be somebody sitting inside here today. Don't miss your last opportunity to give your life to Jesus. Are we together? Yeah, this is security day. Secure your salvation with God. Then the next thief, I don't know what he stole. I don't know if he stole something from Walmart. I don't know what he took. But the Bible just left it like that. When you go to heaven, you can ask him what him thief. But all of a sudden, I know that while he was there, he found confidence in his faith. And he looked around and realized. He just looked, one look. And realized that whatever he says from now is going to go down in eternity. And he said, remember me. <laughs> That's crazy. That's all he said. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. The boy could have got to church over and over and over and over again. And never walked to the altar elder pier. But on the cross. There was a song that I love as a little boy when I was growing up. And it said, and it's all coming back to me now. In the name of Jesus. And the little boy. And he stood there and he says, remember me. And Jesus made sure that he, uh, he addressed it. He signed it before he died. And he says... Today, not tomorrow, today, you will be with me in paradise. In other words, he's simply saying, son, you're in good hands. You're in good hands. You're in good hands. Raise your hand and say, you're in good hands. He was 1950 when this man had, uh, he was the... One of the workers at this insurance company, and he, he took his wife to the doctor. And when he took her there, uh, the wife was a little despondent. The, the story didn't say what was wrong with her, but very despondent. And he looked at her and he said, sweetheart, I, I want to tell you this. You are in good hands. I know this doctor very well. Don't worry about it. You are in good hands. My friends, the God I'm leaving with you, I've tried him. I found him. I know him for myself. And I can guarantee to you today, on safety day, that you're in good hands. Just raise your hand and say, I'm in good hands. Yeah, I'm in good hands. And Jesus is now dying. He's now dying. He died and buried. Disciples got frantic. Paranoia set in. They're wondering. Peter is now asking, so what, what's going to happen? Same Peter, Jesus said to him, man, don't worry about it, man. They were asking questions. Who's going to deny you? Who's going to betray you? Who's going to... Yeah. Every time something interesting happens, it always happens around food. As soon as, if you want to know what is in people's gut, try feed them. Did you know that some of the worst conversations happen during lunch? During lunch. People stone other people in church to death 
around lunch tables. Yeah. There is, and people said, people stopped stoning people from the day of the Pharisee where they caught the woman. And guess what? They brought her alone. Only she. One person can't commit adultery. So guess what? I learned that the next person who they didn't want to bring, he was one another. Yeah, you know, he, he was one of the Pharisees. Yeah, you understand? And they wouldn't bring him. You see? They would not bring him. But he was too bad. They, they, they bring him. So they left him and brought the woman alone. And guess what happened? Since those days, they're still stoning people. They stoned them with Facebook. They stoned them with Instagram. They stoned them with Twitter. They stoned them with TikTok. Stoning people. When in truth and in fact, you should spend more time praying for each other it's time we stop watching people hurt and help them heal are, are we are we together so so jesus is now in the tomb and the same woman the same woman that jesus used to go to her house the same prostitutes that people deject and reject and speak so bad. Hey, one of the worst set of people to bring you down is church people, you know. That's why some people hide their business from church. Church is, church, if you're not careful, church have more funeral more than praise and worship. And all of a sudden, she's right there. Early Sunday morning. Remember, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Sunday morning, Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene, she got up, she got up, and she went there to look for Jesus. In other words, she wasn't the only one. The disciples went, and when they got there, they realized a stone was rolled away, and they went inside. And they look, they look, and say, man, they stole him. They stole him. They stole him. They stole him. What happened? What happened? And they went away. But Mary stayed because nobody like Jesus. I want to know where he is. And she's there. And she starts to wonder where is Jesus? And all of a sudden, two angels appeared. Who are you looking for? She says, I'm looking for Jesus. Where did you put him? Tell me where you put him so I can find him. I want some shelter in my life. He is my shelter in the time of storm. I want him. All of a sudden, Jesus just spoke to her <laughs> and said, Mary, I'm here, babe. I'm right here. I'm right here. You can imagine. <laughs> Just imagine that moment. And guess what? The disciples missed the moment. They missed it. And the same woman who nobody like. It's only church. I know your past follow you. Only church. I was a member of a church one time. And this lady had a baby. Um, some time ago, Elder appeared. She had a baby. And she left Jamaica and came here to have our baby. And many years later, at my church, they wanted a Sabbath school superintendent. And she was recommended. She was recommended for the position. And then... Somebody in the church sent a word to the nominating committee and said, you know why you she? She left Jamaica have one baby. Ask her where the baby day. And she will not know so she baptized. So she can't lead in the church with me there. And so they nominating committee decide to give her a call and say sister so and so tell me something um what church are you used to attend in Jamaica can you get a recommendation she says of course I can and I said you know somebody say and my and my and my people don't play you know if you don't want them call your name don't say nothing 
And they just said, um, sister so-and-so say that you have a baby. Where is the baby? She says, oh, you remember last week during the AY? Hallelujah. You remember last week during the AY? When we had this health nugget thing going on? And you invited this doctor? You remember when you invited this doctor? Who the church was moved significantly by her presentation and performance? That is my daughter. She is 29 years old. We bury people before they die. And we dig grave in anticipation of their death. But when you dig grave. So, 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 so as I close it. So here's the deal now. So she's now there waiting. And all of a sudden Jesus spoke to her. And then she wants to hug him now. Yeah man, she happy hug him. And the Lord of you tell her, said, no, no. All right, okay, all right. Give me a little short hug. Read the scripture. Read it, read it, read it. And the Bible said, and the Lord spoke to her and said, do not tarry with me. Do, in other words, don't stay long. Just hug me. Just give me a little hug. Give me a little hug. The same prostitute was the first one to see Jesus and touch him before any church people. Be careful how you undermine people. Because people who are your enemies can be God's friends. And stop pray and ask God to kill your enemy. God no have no delight in that. You know what God delights in? God delights in providing a table before you in the presence. All right, of your enemy. God will make your enemy live long enough to see him bless you. Can somebody say amen? amen. God not going to kill them. God will make them live long and say, Look, yeah. Look, Panchita. Me a cigar riding on my Ford Cartina. Now she I drive BMW X5. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say, blessing is on the way. Raise your hand and say, blessing is on the way. Somebody say, blessing is on the way. I want to ask you today, is there somebody who has not yet received God as your savior? And you want to make today your safe day? Just come. Just come. Just, just come. Now. Come now, man. I want to ask the parents, secure your children. Introduce them to Jesus. So if you have some children that you would like to be secured... In the arms of God, bring them. Just, just bring them. Just bring them, bring them. Don't make today pass. Bring them, bring them, bring them and dedicate them to the Lord today. Bring them, just bring them, bring them, bring them. I was so moved this morning by that tall gentleman who came here. His, his hair was touching the roof. I know by the grace of God that anything that young man touches is going to be a blessing. Oh yeah. I pronounce that over him today. <laughs> Anything he touches is gonna be a blessing. No, no, bring them up here. Don't, no, no, don't, no, not down there. Bring them, bring them right up here, right up here. Put them in center stage. Bring the children. Bring them. If you have children that you would like for God to secure, bring them. Come, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. If there's a visitor in this house today, there's a visitor in this house today that you want to leave here better than you came. You want to be secured in the arms of Jesus. Just come. Just come. Just, just come. Don't be ashamed. Uh, praise team, can you just retrofit a nice, a nice song for me, please? Just come. Just come. Under his wings, I'm safely abiding. Amen. Bring them come. Though the night deepens and tempts or wise, Bring them. Just bring them. Just bring them. Still I can trust him. If you're sick, if you're sick today and want a shelter in Jesus, just come. Under his wings. Just come, just come, just come. Somebody say,
say under his wings. Under his wings. Just come the man. You're having some challenges in your life today. And you want to leave your security. Just go. Safely. Now, before we sing, before we sing anymore, I, I want to say to you, my friend, that the greatest opportunity you can ever use as your security is to secure your place in heaven secure your place in heaven are you with me so so guess what happened john 3 16 says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life do you need everlasting life that's the greatest sense of security in your life can somebody say amen Amen. One more stanza, please. Under his wings, what a refuge in sorrow. How the heart yearningly turns to its rest. All time when earth has no bond for my Somebody say under his wing. Under his wing. My soul shall abide. My soul shall abide. Safely abide. Safely abide forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you feel a sense of security today? Somebody say, I'm safe with Jesus. Somebody say, I'm in good hands. Clap your hands for the Lord today. I want to invite Elder Peart to come and pray for these very wonderful ladies, gentlemen, you can use my mic, and children who have come. They want security. You cannot rent a house or an apartment in the United States of America without security. You cannot get a bail bond without security. Security is so important. And the bigger you become in this world, if you're a politician, they will give you your own security. But you don't have to be a politician for God to offer you security. He will give you shelter in the time of storm. He'll give you peace in the midst of your storm. Are you with me? So God is our best security. So I pray today that you'll apply to God for security. And once God offers you that. You can sleep like a baby because his eyes watches over you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Amen. Amen. If you want to be safe in Jesus, let me see you stand to your feet. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your man's servant. We thank you, Lord, for the words that you have put in his mouth to speak to us this day. Father, we recognize that we can put up our, our alarm systems. We can uh, call 911 and we can uh, depend on the police, but uh, security really is in you. Uh, 
we recognize, dear Lord, that even if a man may take our life, if we are wrapped up and tied up and entangled in Jesus, there is still victory even beyond the grave. So, Lord, we come today asking you for security. Uh, we come, Lord, and we brought our children in a time when uh, there are evil boys, the devil using even children walking into schools with machine guns it is a terrible times in which we live many of us run from jamaica because of violence and we come here and we are scared to go to the mall i pray god that you will watch over our children i know lord from first and experience what happened in parkland uh, but I know, dear God, that prayer changes things. So, Lord, I pray that you will dispatch angels who excel in strength to watch over them as they leave our homes in the morning. I pray, oh God, that you will protect them and bring them home safely. Father, the church should be a house of safety. Many of us don't feel safe. We feel, dear Lord, that we are being slandered. Mercy, Lord. When you've said that the children of God should have a pure heart, many of us are going to hell for other people's sins. I pray, God, that you will give us locks for our mouths so that we will stop slandering people. I pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will find lodgment in our heart to transform our lives so that we will live lives that are pleasing to thee. Father, we have women who are not safe at home. We have men who are not safe around their wives either because the words that escape our lips Cut them down. Father, I pray today that you will help men to recognize that you have said in your words that we should love our wives even as God loved the church and died for the church. I pray, oh God, that you will educate us so that we will understand that we should love our spouses because the children are watching. And you're hearing the words that escape our lips. Oh, Father, may it be that our homes are safe for our children. Pray, oh God, that you will help us to recognize that we have a responsibility as stewards to take care of our children, to take care of the, the, the people of the church so that we will live a life and that they will feel safe when they come into our courts. Father, Many of us today, we're worried, we're concerned about things that are upon the horizon. Some are here right now with uh, face in court. Some are here right now, they're worried about immigration. Not safe. Any moment, they're driving on a bus and they could be sent home. Not safe. Father, we come to you, oh great and mighty God. Who can we go to in times like these? We come to the rock, a shelter in the time of storm. So, Father, as we come this day and we ask for your security, we pray, Lord, build a fence all around us every day. You're the one to protect us as we travel a long life. We, Lord, we know you can and we know you will. And so I pray, oh God, that you will place your shelter in arms around your people. Grant us your protection as the preacher travels back to Orlando. May you guide him, may you bless him, may you continue to use him to transform many lives. We pray thanking you for your blessings upon your people. I pray to the matchless name of Jesus and God people say amen and amen. As we leave the sanctuary as we go our separate ways may God's favor rest upon
of his hand.